Note, fiber splicing should be done in compliance with your company's approved practices. To install the slack in the baskets, first separate the buffer tubes to be spliced from the expressed buffer tubes. Then, depending on the splicer's preference, store the buffer tubes that are going to be spliced in the bottom of the basket, or store express tubes in the bottom, and then tubes to be spliced on top. Route the buffer tubes to be spliced to the splice trays by placing one loop in the basket, and then looping the remainder around the tray tower as shown. Use tie wraps to organize the buffer tubes in the basket. Attach the splice trays to the tray tower, starting at the bottom position. If needed, the trays can be locked in the up position by using the red kickstand feature. Splice trays hold and protect fiber optic splices and store slack fiber. To prepare for splicing, remove the tray cover. The six splice modules can be moved or removed to accommodate your splice arrangement. However, the lowest splice module cannot be closer to the hinge than its position as indicated in the video because it could cause violation of minimum bend radius. Route the feeder and distribution tubes to the appropriate side of the tray. Mark each tube one quarter inch beyond the tie down slots. Use a buffer tube cutter to cut each tube at the mark. And remove the tube from each fiber group. When using gel-filled buffer tubes, clean any gel from the last two inches of each buffer tube before applying buffer tube wrap. Cut a section of buffer tube wrap and wrap it around each buffer tube to be attached to the splice tray. Place the buffer tube in the tray and tie wrap it to the tray. Arrange the fiber around the tray for slack storage and splicing. Replace the tray cover. Repeat these steps for each tray until all the fiber has been stored in a tray. Finally, secure the tray to the basket using the Velcro strap.